Okay, good morning. How many of you uh, have seen the videos recorded of each other? What what were recorded? You had recorded your own presentations, right? Are they shared with you now? Not yet. Okay. So I think they will be shared, and you have to do a peer evaluation. Probably that was the idea. I just had a chance to have a glimpse at some of them, and uh, I was surprised by the range of topics. There were a uh, lot of interesting topics picked up by people. And uh, have you seen the videos which are uploaded? Right, all of you. Many of you. Okay. Uh, because I just thought we'll save some time on speaking it in front of you, and instead of that, we can do some interesting hands-on activities in the class, which would be uh, rather interesting than that. Okay. So now that. people will miss out on some part of it uh, they must have heard it already so we'll just go ahead and start off so i'll be talking about presentation skills in the next couple of modules and uh, the reason why this was included is mainly because lot of people face uh, the presentation part of their seminar or whatever but invariably i have seen people struggling last night in preparing the slides and uh, like i spoke in my present that small video that typically it starts with selecting the template and then coming back to trying to map whether the report is can completely covered there or not so we are going to follow that uh, strategy which will be useful for creating such presentations so let's just get going okay so the uh, outline for today is mainly about uh, presentation and various aspects of presentation which will be uh, spread over couple of time any problem some problem can you uh, can you read this what is the problem actually is uh, is the font problem or the color problem color is bad are the fonts okay no they you can't see them the logo is cropped the iit bombay logo is not seen completely how many people uh, notice this part 137 such slides is it going to be interesting at all <laughs> right so yeah it was just kind of uh, a way of showing you how bad presents really make it repulsive also lot of people forget about <clears throat> understanding what is the venue of this particular presentation which you are going to give and there are specific rules for that so if it is a dark room and you are going to present what should be the background of screen of your slides versus it's a highly lit room like this and then what should be that so typically the rule says that it should be white background for a brightly lit room because it if you use white background for a dark lit room it puts more pressure on the eyes of people who are watching it so you have to really strain your eyes to see that white screen beaming on you okay that apart let's so i'll be covering some part of visual communication into this because i come from the background of visual communication firstly and also it was a necessity to get that into the course so people must be uh, remembering this this slide right what is a typical talk outline how does it relate to a film story uh so it is about the setup conflict and couple of climaxes till we reach the end and if you translate that to the presentation what you do typically it will be this so a typical talk outline will make a good story and people love to listen to stories people don't don't like to listen to your your presentation more mainly if it is woven in a way that it sounds like a story to them okay so we are going to follow uh, this particular methodology of planning then executing it and then finally thinking about how to impress by covering some segments out of that and when we say plan we are going to use some techniques here there are many techniques we are going to use brainstorming uh, and for analyzing and organizing we are going to use something called affinity mapping concept mapping or mind maps uh, as like we can choose whatever 
at uh, the execute stage, we are going to see if that particular presentation can be translated into a, a outline which is having the content in a bulleted format so that people know. And then chunking part comes here where, where how you connect the dots and the flow is maintained here. And additional of addition of graphics becomes an integral part in the execution part. That is the time you take decision which topics require graphic support, which can be only textual and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the impress stage, then you talk about what should be the color scheme, what should be the font, what should be the transition between the slides and all those jazzy transi transitions you get. Because it is talking about the overall appeal of the presentation. Now, what is the look and feel the users will get after they see the presentation? So that is going to be the impress part. But nevertheless, the last point of practice, and I think that you can realize when you see your own videos uh, which are recorded. So focusing on plan, today we are going to do an activity here about brainstorming. And we have the groups already in place, so we don't have to worry about that. An important thing is that this activity is, uh, the topics of the activity are related to the campus. You don't have to think outside the campus right now. Restrict yourselves to that. And these are the topics. Now, what I'm going to do is, we have already distributed the topics amongst the 24 groups. So there are six topics. Each group, uh, every seventh group actually, gets the same topic. And uh, I think this is the sitting position you already are aware about. You are sitting in that same position. And this will be the topic distribution. So these are the groups which will get the particular topics. Now, what I request is, there are these A3 papers which will be given out to you and some post-it stickers. What you have to do is, you have to start, you have seen the brainstorming video, right? How many have seen the brainstorming video? Lot of you, okay. Not many of you actually, okay. So, on that topic, just pass on the post-it stickers to your group members, some of them, and ask them to write on that one single idea about whatever the topic is given to you. Okay, so start writing whatever comes to your mind when you look at that subject. Like I said, don't be judgmental, just drop it. Please use bold handwriting as much as possible. We have to photograph that later on, whatever you have written there. Okay. Remember to write only one concept on one paper. There is no space at all anyway. You can't write many more than that. Ideally, avoid writing sentences. Uh, write like maybe uh, two, three words probably. It's okay to write longer sentence, but it just, hello. So don't worry about organization at this stage. You don't have to think about what comes under what, is this the first topic and below that. No such organization is required at this stage. Just put, a, put them. You don't have to worry about whether they are in straight line or whatever, whatever. Just keep writing them. Secondly, don't argue with anybody saying, okay, I want this topic in this. So don't argue at this stage. We'll talk about it later on. I'll give you enough time to argue, but not that, not now. If somebody has a query about that topic name itself, then they can tell me. I can just come and sort that particular confusion out. Okay, so uh, here is a question. So the sentence says internet and uh, network connectivity. So whether you have to talk about um, advantage of that or problems with that or uh, types of that. So right now everything is allowed. So you can, somebody can just talk about problems, somebody can talk about advantages, somebody can talk about what are available on campus and what should be available on campus kind of thing. Everyone can take their own viewpoint and start writing. That's okay. That's the precise idea that if you have a group of five people, you can distribute those silos. Okay, I'll talk about these parts. And don't be like, you can be open to others who contribute to that idea also. Keep going. Okay, what is this? Okay, so we have a group here, 2A2. Their topic was movement and navigation and they have around 20, I suppose. Okay, so what I want is, you should, uh, can you get a mic for that? So, 
you should now talk about whatever you have written. And then, which are the other groups who have movement and navigation as their topic? One there, here. There should be four. Ha, ah, here. Okay. So, after that, you guys can tell what is additional that you have written there. Okay, af after you listen to them. So, so we, we mostly thought about whatever came to our minds first. So, there are topics like uh, Instamap, buses, skateboards, bicycle renting, uh, what is the shortest path to our class or some any other place in the institute, uh, how can we solve our traffic problems, uh, uh, bicycle parking, uh, where is my class, where am I, uh, Location. Why is the bus always crowded. Tum tums. Yes. Okay. All, all such things. And then. Okay. So, how many uh, groups of this mo movement and navigation had tum tum as the as the integral problem? So, tum tum as the integral part of their uh, post its there. You had tum tum there. You you never thought of it right now. Okay. Uh, how about you? You have tum tum in this. Okay. Okay, so what are the additional things than what they said? Estimate is there, transportation, path direction, uh, well maintained vehicle shops. That okay. Is Automatic parking system. Automatic parking systems. Okay. That is new for from that. Okay. Okay. Well maintained footpath. Okay. With that animal scholar, the park or zoo something. Okay. Anything okay. which which Traffic both management. these pardon me? Traffic management. Traffic management. Okay. Oh, I need to Anything that these two groups have not covered? Uh, the triathlon, like the marathon and the triathlon. Okay. And Let the us different routes to reach the destination. That was already. Done. Okay. The the objective here is let's take some more uh, another group probably. So we have internet and network connectivity here. So, what are the topics you have listed down? Okay, so um, we got here that uh, I mean the internet connectivity here is pretty uh, I mean pretty much high speed. So, uh, but though some sites are still blocked, um, we have we'll just talk about these yeah, points. Yeah, what it, you're it has HD videos. It's free. Uh, it available in um, throughout campus. Wi-Fi. We have Wi-Fi NFL classrooms. Okay. Um, uh, we have wired wireless things, less connectivity outside buildings, okay. date, uh, <laughs> portable Wi-Fi. Uh, I mean, we can move towards that. Okay. Uh, it's helpful in academic and learning process. Uh, okay. But there is there are still misuse of internet, and uh, they are not available in some hostels. So okay. Yeah. So which is the other group which has this topic? Okay. So what is different than what these people have said. So, okay, they they acknowledge the point that more or less the availability of internet and connectivity is quite good. So, you have listed down most of the points which are present there and then some way forward like 2G, 3G, 4G, how it can come and portable, this thing. Anything you want to add to what the list says? So, we have talked about the proxy and uh, uh, there is a point about the computer center which manages all of this. And there is also the issue of uh, the time they take to resolve issues if they occur. Okay. So, uh, after the problem is posted, the time it takes to resolve that. That should yeah. be lesser. Mm. Okay. Anybody adds to that list of scripts? Maybe that differs from hostel to hostel probably. So, there can be a difference of opinion. The, the point here is that you, if you can see that and that will be more evident later that because we have put our brains together you could come up with so many different aspects of the same problem which otherwise when you gave those individual presentations of five minutes you talk about certain one problem at that time but the moment you have this brainstorming you suddenly get a range of uh, topics coming up in front of you and these topics probably so now is the time when you can argue about it and now you have to keep them in a proper structure. Now, how to get the structure part is uh, something we can do. So, for structure, let us do another activity. So, these are a set of 
uh, alphabets to be remembered, <coughs> right? So what are the techniques by which you can memorize these alphabets? So think about it and uh, maybe somewhere you can, uh, you can give yourself like one minute to, to think of ideas of how to memorize this set of alphabets. You can write it down on a piece of paper somewhere. Here is the main question asked by somebody. Do we have to remember just the alphabets or also the order? Okay, so I, I take out the tough part of it. So order is not important. You have to just give me the alphabets. Now how to do that? Or anybody actually, if you have an idea. Do you have a plan to, to memorize that? Yeah? You can make? Yeah. Yeah. So you say make words out of that. Anybody agrees to that? Anybody has another option to that? Okay, so he says pick the initial letter of the words which are created using these words, uh, these alphabets and then form a story of the words which are coming up. Okay, so let's try that. Anybody has any other idea? Ah, couple of them. Yeah, same thing, right? So take, make words and make a sent meaningful sentence out of it. But the words length should be same as the number of things. Oh, the words should be... Uh, so okay, so example, give me an example for this. Uh, try, try constructing something. He's saying amount of words also has to reflect in that, uh, amount of alphabets have to reflect in the word you have created, right? Okay. Uh, we can map each and every alphabet to natural numbers uh, by remembering some pictures or... Okay, so alphabet. A is 1 and B is 2 and then similarly, okay. So there are multiple correct answers to this problem and all of them will be possible. So let's see one after the another. So you can you can say how many E's are there and how many A's are there and just remember that for probably. But that's not very good. Then like somebody said, you can create some words out of it uh, and try to remember them. But it will be difficult to remember maybe such words and especially uh, if they are not connected to each other. So structure or a presentation whenever you are kind to bring up the structure. It is very important to understand what is the concept, uh, context of what you are going to present. So it, it will only appeal to those who are in that particular context. Otherwise, it will go haywire. So if, even if I tell you to rem uh, like remember this uh, set of words, it's very difficult because it's coincidence, re-emerging, unspent. Or even if I arrange it like this, it's very difficult to remember this. But the context, uh, which is very nearer to your mind, if I create something in that, probably it will not be very difficult for you to remember. So if I just say that it is computer science and engineering, probably you don't have to even worry about counting how many words of alphabets were there. And uh, okay, so thanks to this uh, anagram server, it's a very interesting website. Uh, you can just uh, create some in, uh, interesting anagrams out of this. The point here is that the moment you have the context in place, you can very easily associate with that. And presentation, most of the times, lack that aspect. So it's not contextual. So people come there to listen to you and then you start something. You are very much into the context what you want to present, but how to get the other people into the context what you are trying to say is the most important point. And that's where, uh, yeah. Where, where? Uh, ah, the L is missing, right? I think that was, I think that was capital I which was uh, wrongly typed by me. There are how many I's here? One, two, three. Yeah, there are three I's here, but in the top order there are only two. Uh, in, in, in the other anagrams you mean to say? In the last one, the one T is there, in the main there are two T's. Ah, there are two. Where are two T's there? There is only one T on the top. Ha ha, there it is, okay. And okay, there is only one D there, okay. The point here is that uh, if you put that context right, then you will get into the structure quite easily. So now is the time to, to start organizing those place, uh, the post-it papers you have 
put up on that uh, A3 paper in a form where it will make sense to you. So now try to create headings out of uh, whatever you have. If you have not written a heading, you create a heading and write another post-it on top of it and then organize the other papers below that. So it, that is how you have to uh, organize them. This will be uh, the activity for next 15 minutes or so. So just try to write them. Okay, I can see that uh, people are having some columns ready and there are some uh, post-its under column. But there are some people who have like long list of post-its in one column and only two of them in another. So when you have a long list of post-its in one, try to see if there are sub columns available there. So try to split it so that the balance is achieved. Okay, I can also see people getting confused between what is the heading and what is what is lying behind that. So, uh, typically give broader heading. For example, we had a group of uh, food wastage here and uh, they just forgot that they have to talk about campus. So, they just went ahead and said malnourishment in India is a big problem all that. But that is not the topic here. So, restrict yourself to campus problems right now. We are not talking about India problems. And secondly, uh, a broad outline could be that what are advantages, disadvantages, what are the problems, how can they be overcome. So these kind of global headings will help you in categorizing what you have written there. So try to just keep them into very simpler uh, categories right now. Later on we can think about subdividing them. Okay, we have here one about internet connectivity and they have just three topics. So what are the positives, what are the negatives, and what are the solutions? Solutions for the negatives, right? So is there a mapping between what are the negatives and corresponding solutions to it? Can you, can you connect them? So when you have two related terms, like they had a term called negatives of the Wi-Fi or any problems on network problems on campus and they had some list of solutions. That time you have to connect the association between what is the problem, what is the corresponding solution and see if you can draw a line between those. Draw a line connecting those, sorry. Okay, so we can continue with this, but uh, I had written this, but now I can see that it's not possible to read after you click a photograph of that. So ideally, you can uh, you can take this with you, uh, and then we have to actually convert that to something which is readable for all. So can you see these two images, and uh, can you spot some differences? So one is a mind map, one is a concept map that. I think uh, most of you know by now, but uh, the one on the left is a mind map and the uh, one on the right is a concept map. Uh, can you see the visual difference in that is typically uh, mind map allows you to, to add uh, various colors, images and uh, it's mostly hand drawn. Uh, nowadays with software you can use a software to do that. But typically it started off by, by doodling uh, during the lecture or during a talk or, and then just started jotting down certain things. Another important thing which is, which is most useful is to, to label the linkage. So that's why you can make sense out of it. So earlier mind maps used to be just drawn and connected somehow, but now with the linkages it is quite clear. So, I am I'm going to just talk about the broad difference between the concept maps and the mind maps. 
but mainly the the task is to convert these presentations to either of them and that is up to you how to do that but the the connector lines between the keywords is a difference a differential for uh, the concept map and another important differential which you could see visually there was that mind map typically starts from the center and then just goes omnidirectional in any way and concept map typically uh, comes down uh, in a tree structure but not necessarily every time but it is typically done like that because you have this another thing is that so causes topic b so a and b connected with the uh, the label connector is typically sentence is used how it has caused to this so that becomes easy reading for anybody to even if you transfer a concept map to somebody else they can again rebuild the same story so this is in tune with what professor fatak was saying so if i write a book if i write a uh, report if i create a presentation and without me speaking here if i just pass it on to somebody are you able to create the same structure what i have in my mind uh, even if you read it separately without talking to me so that will happen only when these associations are established in a manner that uh, that are understandable to anybody and everybody in uh, in that audience so that is where the challenge lies so in contrast mind maps are more flexible and it's like i said it starts mostly with the doodling of uh, what are concepts are being gathered at that time and <coughs> it will it will probably go in from the center to various directions so that is how mind map will typically be so you can continue with the same topic the group continues having the same topic some people have gone tangential to the thing going to india or something so bring it down to campus firstly secondly i have seen that people have uh, not thought beyond the given sentence so uh, prod for more questions like uh, i had this buildings and infrastructure group anybody has this group buildings and infrastructure okay so what were the typical headings of your this thing there was one group which actually listed all the buildings on the campus right there were 15 20 stickers on that page which had names of all the building <laughs> because it says buildings and infrastructure so they were correct in their way yeah, probably they didn't listen to me when i was talking about you can you can ask each other the questions about what are the problems what are the advantages what are the things when the new infrastructure is been built up and uh, so on and so forth so <clears throat> keep keep going in in various directions typically the the topic should be uh, can be interpreted in many ways and that's what is happening that's why the four groups will add on to the flavor because everybody will bring their own perspective in that the idea is that use any tool online uh, for mind mapping if you don't want to do a digital mind map there are many tools actually for mind mapping and also for concept mapping if you just google for it you'll get many of them uh, i don't want to recommend specific things if you are okay of creating a mind map using just pen and paper go ahead doesn't matter scan it and upload it just see to it that it is readable and uh, shareable so that people also can get it and uh, so that i am going to post a link where you can put these things right so i hope to see those concept maps or mind maps on this particular given topic and uh, those will be then uh, uploaded so uh, one per group is enough individually you don't have to create one per group is enough so you can you can name that file with the name of the group dot jpeg that's it but we will only get 24 mind maps not more than that if you have serious argument about this is not the ideal one then probably you can have another mind map but then uh, you can say option a and option b for that right but ideally i want only one per group ha huh, these are some of the mind mapping tools which i have used personally free mind is good and even x mind is good uh, but you are free to choose think busan is the the most ideal one but it's a paid software they give you some little bit free options not very easy for uh, continuing work on that because after some time it just stops of the paid service right okay thank you